Hello and welcome to our Sunday evening edition of Arirang News. I'm Daniel Che. It's a big day on the nation's trade front today. Trade barriers between Korea and China as well as Vietnam and New Zealand were scrapped. Plus, another round of tariff cuts is due on January 1st. Kim Min-ji starts us off with changes that could help boost the Korean economy. Korea's free trade agreement with China took effect on Sunday along with separate trade pacts with Vietnam and New Zealand. According to the Trade Ministry, the pacts are expected to lift Korea's GDP by 1 percent in the next 10 years. Together, they're expected to create over 55,000 jobs, as well as bring about consumer benefits worth more than 15 billion U.S. dollars over the next decade. The trade pacts will also likely boost exports by $5 billion per year, with the trade surplus also jumping around $600 million annually. With the nation's exports having fallen every month this year, the free trade agreements, especially the one with China, Korea's largest trading partner, are expected to give the country a much-needed shot in the arm. An FTA with the largest trading partner will uh, provide a breakthrough for the Korean exports generally. There will be uh, industries that will go through difficulties, but largely many industries will benefit. China will immediately eliminate tariffs on more than 950 items, while New Zealand will cut import duties on over 2,000 goods. China will also lower duties on almost 5,800 items, while Vietnam will do the same for some 270 products and New Zealand over 1,000 goods. On top of that, the ministry says the opening of the service markets in the three countries will likely create more business opportunities for Korean companies, especially in the entertainment, environmental management and construction sectors. And to maximize the benefits of the trade deals, the government plans to offer systematic assistance to local companies so they can make inroads into the three countries. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. Korea's economic growth rate could slow even further if the predictions of a leading private think tank come true. The LG Economic Research Institute has cut its growth forecast to 2.5 percent from 2.7 percent in September. That's lower than the government's 3.1 percent and the Bank of Korea's 3.2. The institute cited the continued export slump and weakening domestic consumption as the main driving factors behind the revision. It added private consumption and construction investment are unlikely to rebound next year due to the aging population and low expectations for long-term economic growth. As for the global economy, the LG think tank predicts growth of 2.9 percent for 2016, down from this year's 3.1. In domestic politics, lawmakers from Korea's two main rival parties have again failed to find common ground on how to redraw the nation's electoral map. Kim Mo sang the chairman of the ruling Senduri party, and Won Yu chul the party's floor leader, met this afternoon with their counterparts from the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy, Moon Jae-in and Lee jong to try to hammer out an agreement. But the two sides failed to narrow their differences on the restrict redistricting issue, as well as long-pending bills related to livelihood concerns. On the redistricting issue, the main sticking point between the two sides have been whether or not to decrease the number of proportional representatives. Representatives from the two parties are expected to meet again next week. A senior White House official says if North Korea demonstrates its commitment to denuclearization, it will make everything possible, including engagement with the U.S. Kim Yeon-bin shares with us Daniel Crittenbrink's advice to the reclusive state. During an interview with Seoul-based Yonhap News Agency, Daniel Crittenbrink, the senior Asian affairs director at the National Security Council, said that everything is possible if North Korea demonstrates that is serious about denuclearization. The remark came in response to a question about the U.S. position on North Korea's demand for talks on a peace treaty aimed at formally ending the Korean War. Pyongyang has stepped up efforts for such talks in recent months, but Washington has rejected the idea, as the communist regime has continued to enhance its nuclear program. Christian Briggs said that North Korea needs to demonstrate that it is fully committed to denuclearization, which is what it is obligated to do under the 2005 Joint Statement and a whole series of UN Security Council resolutions. He also said the Obama administration has made it clear it is willing to engage countries with which it has had difficult histories, including Myanmar, Iran, and Cuba, but stressed that it won't hold talks simply for talks' sake. 
The six-party talks aimed at denuclearizing North Korea, involving the two Koreas, the U.S., China, Japan, and Russia, have been stalled since 2008. With Pyongyang demanding the unconditional resumption of talks, and Washington saying the regime must first take concrete steps toward demonstrating its commitment to denuclearization. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. The average South Korean lives 12 years longer than their compatriot in the North. According to Statistics Korea on Sunday, the life expectancy in South Korea is 85 years for women and 78 for men, while the corresponding number up North are 73 and 66. The 12-year difference is mainly due to the infant mortality rate, which is 7.6 times higher this year in North Korea. Another major contributing factor, nourishment. The average South Korean consumer consumes rather roughly 3,000 kilocalories of food per day, while a North Korean consumes only about 2,000, falling well short of the UN Food and Agriculture Organization's daily recommendation of 2,500. If current trends continue, the life expectancy gap could widen to 14.5 years for men and shrink to 11.9 years for women by the year 2055. The U.S. Defense Department has rejected accusations that U.S. forces Korea lied about anthrax shipments to Korea. The USFK came under fire after a Korea-U.S. working group reported last week it had brought anthrax samples into Korea 16 times since 2009, including an accidental shipment of live anthrax in April. Pentagon spokesman Commander Bill Urban told the Seoul-based Yonhap News in a report Saturday the USFK had correctly informed the public in a May press release that the April shipment was in support of the first biodefense training exercise at Osan Air Base, not the first in the country. He also said the USFK had clearly stated that biological defense testing and training had continued since 2009. Hillary Clinton focused most of her energy on her GOP opponents in the third presidential debate between the candidates running for the Democratic Party nomination. Clinton, the former Secretary of State, deflected persistent attack from Senator Bernie Sanders and former Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley on gun control, Wall Street and foreign military entanglements, while shifting the focus to Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. She accused Trump of undermining the fight against terrorism and said he is fast becoming the best recruiter for the extremist group calling itself Islamic State or ISIS. Going forward, it seems Clinton will continue to frame the election as a choice between her approach to national security and the recklessness of Republicans who have demonized Muslims since the recent attacks on Paris and San Bernardino, California. Religious congregations across the United States are upping security measures following a season of violence, including race-driven church shootings and Islamic extremist attacks. The Associated Press reports Christian churches have been refining their security plans ahead of Christmas, with some wanting to hire their own police for protection. Mosque leaders around the country are meeting with law enforcement officials as an anti-Muslim fuel fuels arson attacks and vandalism. The Federal Emergency Management Agency has been holding specialized training for congregations for all hazards, including active shooter incidents. Green researchers plan to buy the most powerful device available to take pictures of the human body. Our Wan Jian reports how the technology could help treat some of the most deadly diseases in the country. Vascular disease is the second leading cause of death in Korea after cancer. To treat vascular disease, accurate scanning and diagnosis are crucial. That's why scientists at the Korea Basic Science Institute have decided to invest in a 7 Tesla MRI scanner, the most powerful on the market. Magnetic resonance imaging, more commonly known as MRI, is a technique that uses magnetic pulses to create pictures of the insides of the human body. And the strength of the magnets inside these machines are rated by a measurement unit called Tesla. Most hospitals use three Tesla MRI machines for clinical purposes. Compared to the standard three Tesla system, the new seven Tesla scanners can create ultra-high resolution images with micrometer precision. Despite these upgrades, housing one of these machines is not simple. A seven Tesla scanner weighs around 48 tons, which is heavier than six full-grown male elephants. Plus, with a price tag of more than $6 million each, the seven Tesla scanners are about three times more expensive than the three Tesla machines. But it's a price that scientists around the world are willing to pay. 
They say the seven Tesla machines will significantly improve brain imaging quality and open new doors to advance clinical research. Won Ji Hyun, Arirang News. And now for a quick look at the weather before we go. On Monday, expect rain or snow nationwide in the early hours of the day. If you're driving, you'll want to take extra care on the roads as the wet weather is bound to create icy, slippery conditions. Seoul and Daejeon and Daegu will all start the day at 2 degrees Celsius and rise to 7, 9 and 9 respectively. And with that, here's a look at the weather conditions outside of Korea around the world. And that brings us to the end of our newscast. And as Hillary Clinton said to wrap up the debate, may the force be with you. Thanks for watching.